Gunsmoke. Brought to you by L and M Filters. This is it. L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Chester. Well, I didn't know you was back. Yeah, I rode in late last night. Have a good trip? Well, I ran out of grub and I ran out of water. The last hundred miles got pretty long. <laughs> My. Yeah. Now, what of interest has been happening in Dodge? Well, sir, let me see. Oh, I got the toothache. No. Uh, that was the day you left. No, no, it wasn't. It was the day after that. Ah. At least I think it was. I ain't real sure. Uh, but you, you are all right now, though. Oh, yes, sir. I'm fine. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I uh, noticed a sign up the street, New Bank. Yeah, they opened last week. Uh-huh. Well, that's a big thing for Dodge, isn't it? A new bank? Oh, I guess so. How do you know who's running the bank? A fellow named Holt. Drew Holt. Holt, huh? I never heard of him. No, sir. He just come to town, opened him up the bank, and he... Oh, my goodness. Marshal Dillon? Yes, sir. Parsley Smith, sir. At your service. So that's your name. I've seen you around, Mr. Smith. Not Mr. Smith, young fella. General Smith, Third Illinois Calvary. What? I thought the Third Illinois was demobilized a long time ago, sir. It was, sir. In the fall of 65, we stood with General Grant before Richmond. Yeah, that was our last action. Well, what can I do for you, General? Well, for me, nothing. For the good citizens of your town, plenty. Oh? I arrived on the Santa Fe last week, sir. And I've been waiting for your return. You sure wait loud, General. You see, he's kind of like a preacher when he gets started, Mr. Dillon. You are to hear him. Well, I'm only doing my duty. But now that the marshal's back, he, he can take over. Take over what, General? Drew Holt is a thief, Marshal. What do you mean, the new banker? Oh, that's what he talks about all the time, Mr. Dillon. He claims that when Holt gets enough money on deposit, he's going to steal it. Well, how do you know this, General? Well, I, I haven't told anybody else, but I knew Holt in the war, Marshal. So? We caught him, but he escaped. He, he was a Confederate spy. He was? Well, of course, there's nothing wrong with being a spy, but, but Holt also was a Union spy. That man is no good. He's got to be stopped. Are you sure of all this, General? My word is an officer and a gentleman, sir. All right, I'll look into it. Well, just don't take too long, Marshal. Drew Holt's just waiting for enough deposits to make it worthwhile. Well, he wouldn't get very far, General. A man who spied for both armies and lived through it? You're underestimating the enemy, Marshal. But I, I've told you, it's your responsibility now. Yes, sir. Sure. Good day, sir. Uh, Chester. Yes, sir? About uh, what of interest has been happening in Dodge? 
Have you figured out just yet which day it was that you got that toothache? This is it, L&M filters. It stands out from all the rest. Miracle tip, much more flavor. L&M's got everything. It's the best. L&M is best. Stands out from all the rest. L&M's got everything. Everything? Everything. Best flavor? L&M stands out for flavor. The miracle tip draws easy. Let you enjoy all the taste. Best filter? L&M stands out for effective filtration. No filter compares with L&M's pure white miracle tip for quality or effectiveness. Best tobaccos? Highest quality tobaccos. Low nicotine tobaccos. L&M tobaccos. Light and mild. Every way, L&M is best. Stands out from all the rest. How easy they draw. How mild they are. L&M is sweeping the country. It's America's best filter tip cigarette. This is a place, Mr. Dillon. Drew Holt? Yes? I'm Marshal Dillon, Holt. Uh, this is Chester Proudfoot. I do. Well, this is a pleasure. Have a chair, gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, I heard you were out of town, Marshal. Well, I got back last night. Dodge has grown since you were away, eh? <laughs> yes. Well, we're doing fine. Just fine, except for one thing. Oh? Uh -huh. That crazy old fool, General Smith. I don't know what he's got against me. I never even saw him before, but... Now, you're going to have to lock him up, Marshal. I'm not going to have my bank and my name ruined by a madman. Uh-huh. Um, where are you from, Holt? What? I said, where are you from? Where? Back east, Pennsylvania. Why? Oh, you look familiar. I thought maybe we'd met somewhere a long time ago at, uh... Couldn't have been in the Army, could it? I wasn't in the Army, Marshal. No. Well, it doesn't matter. Right? Oh, what do you want? Well, I didn't know you were busy. Well, wait outside. Yeah, I'll wait at the Alfred Ganser. You want me, you come. You'll have to excuse him. He's kind of a handyman I keep on staff. Uh-huh. Yeah, sure. Well, um, we'll be going, Hold. Glad you came by, Marshal. Yeah. You're... Uh, you're not gonna do anything about General Smith? I don't know. But don't you do anything about him. Come on, Chester. Yes, sir. Oh, what do you think, Mr. Dillon? He don't seem too bad to me. Outside being kindly short-tempered. Like when that fellow walked in. You know who that fellow was, Chester? No, sir. His name's Ed Nash. He's a hired gunman from up north. Uh, you wait here, Chester. I won't be long. All right, sir. Uh, tell Mr. Botkin hello for me. Yeah, I will. Marshal, back safe and sound. How are you, Mr. Bakken? Well, can't complain. Sit down, Marshal, sit down. Uh, you're not even complaining about your competition down the street? Holt's Bank? Not at all. Dodge needs another bank, Marshal. Oh, is that so? Certainly is. Now I'll be able to spend more time in the land business, and that's where I'm needed. Uh, tell me something, Mr. Bakken. Yeah. Do you know anything about Drew Holt? 
Well, he came to see me the first day he got here, Marshal. Showed me his credentials and his charter. Perfectly sound man. Uh-huh. But a man could fake credentials, couldn't he? Oh, come now, Marshal. You've been listening to that crazy old General Smith. Now, you think he's lying, huh? Why, that old fool lies about everything. He told me he'd fought under Zachary Taylor in the Black Hawk War, and that the last time he saw Taylor was at Harper's Ferry. Well, what do you think of that? Well, that had been some ten years after Taylor died. Mm-hmm, just about. And you can be sure he's lying about Drew Holt, too. Well, I hope you're right. You bet I am. And don't forget what I said. We need that bank. We need it bad. It's going to mean a lot to the whole country around here. You wait and see. Okay, Mr. Barker. I'll wait. Evening, Kitty. Hello, Matt. Uh, you uh, haven't seen General Smith around tonight, have you? He's usually here about this time. You gonna do something about him, Matt? Yeah, there's not much I can do, except to tell him to quit talking. Well, if he's got any proof about this, he ought to bring it out. As far as I can tell, he just says Holt's a thief and expects everybody to believe him. You know, I'm finding out General Smith's something of a liar, Kitty. Huh? Like he's coming here on the train. He, he didn't come on the train. He came on the stage. The driver himself told me today. Now, why does he have to lie about that? Who cares? It beats me. But maybe I'll find out when Doc gets back from the country. Well, what do you mean, Matt? Now, General Smith said he was with the 3rd Illinois Cavalry. That's Doc's old outfit. Say, now... That'll be interesting. Yeah, but I feel kind of uneasy about it. Why? Well, he's a liar, sure, but I'm not sold on this Drew Holt. He seems harmless enough. A man that hires a gunman like Ed Nash isn't as harmless as he might be, Kitty. I didn't know Nash was a gunman. Well, he is. I've seen him up north. He doesn't remember me, though. Well, what's Holt need of a man like that? Well, if you ask him, he'd probably say it was to protect his bank. Mr. Botkin doesn't have gunmen hanging around his bank. No, he doesn't. Well, there you are, Matt. General's arrived. Yeah. Well, I better go talk to him, Kitty, and get it over with. Come back later, Matt. Uh, yeah, I'll try. Draw me a beer, barkeep. And I could drop a shot of good bourbon in it. Yes. Oh, well. Good evening, Marshal. Will you join me in a drink? Uh, no, thank you, General. Yeah, I see the new bank is still open. When are you going to close it? I'm not going to. You're shaking your duty, eh? No, not the way I figure it, sir. Drew Holt's credentials are good, according to Mr. Botkin. Uh, nothing easier than that, Especially for somebody as clever as Holt is. He's hired a gunman, General. It could be to take care of you. <laughs> take more than that to scare a man who stood before the batteries at Vicksburg. Have you ever faced great shot, Marshal? Look, General, I your, was a... your talk is hurting this town. Now, we need that bank. I was, I was decorated by General Grant himself, Marshal. In, 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 in person. Look, your talk can also hurt Botkin's I... bank. Now, people lose faith in a hurry when they get started. Now, you're not helping yeah, but... Dodge at all. Well, I helped win the war, Marshal. That's why they gave me a medal. Will you keep your voice Give down? Give it to me. Keep your voice down. Now, look, General. Either you prove that Drew Holt is a thief, or you quit talking about him. Now, I mean it. Huh. I'm under fire, eh? Well, that's one way of putting it, General, but you come up with proof or I'll run you out of Oh, you'll get your proof soon enough, but it'll be too late then. There's no use arguing about it. I've warned you now. Next time, out you go. If they'd listened to me at Bull Run, there'd never have been no disaster. General, why don't... Now, what's the use? I've warned you. Now, you remember it. I'll do my duty as I see fit, Marshal. I always have... They 
More coffee, Matt? Uh, no, no, thanks, Doc. Mm, oh, my, look at that coffee. Oh, I sure made it black and heavy this morning. Well, you'd complain if it wasn't. Yes, I, I suppose I would. Oh, my, 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 delivering babies is some fine way to make a living. Now, what else would you use for an excuse to stay up all night, Doc? <laughs> excuse, listen, well, I could always shine me up a tin star and sit around saloons waiting for dawn and acting like a killjoy. <laughs> yes. It doesn't look like work, but it is. Uh, oh, now, just when I start a good row, you you get serious on me. <sighs> oh, I'm sorry, Doc. I guess I'm in a bad mood this morning. Oh? Well, what's the matter? General Parsley Smith? Yeah. You haven't told me anything about him. Well, I want to see him first. I want to talk to him. But you told him to lay off, Matt, so he probably will. Oh, yeah, sure. I bet he will. Uh, uh. Oh, see, I hear Drew Holt bought himself a house out at the edge of town. Mm-hmm. Well, now, that doesn't sound like a man who's planning to run away. No, it doesn't. Hey, Mr. Dillon? Oh, uh, oh hello, Doc. How are you, Justin? General Smith's at it again. He's standing out there in front of Holt's bank yelling at everybody who goes in. He's telling them they might as well throw their money in the street as put it in there. He'll probably lay off, huh, Doc? Yeah, well, let's go and see him, Matt. All right. You can say hello to him before I run him out of town. <laughs> That look at that. See, he just talked that fellow out of going in there. Uh huh. Well, he'll quit talking soon enough. Yeah. Oh, he's seen you, Doc. Yeah. So he has. Doc. Doc Adam. Hello, Parsley. Oh Lord, what what, what are you doing in Dodge? I live here. What are you doing here? Well, I, I, I was on my way to Arizona, but I stopped here because I... Well, I, I guess you heard about Drew Holt and this bank. I thought I told you to lay off Holt, General. Well, I'm, I'm only doing my duty since you won't do yours, Marshal. You're a hard man to convince, aren't you? Well, I've already saved two men from losing their money today. Well, that's all you're going to save. You're through, General. I'm going to give you till noon, and if I see you around after that, I'm going to lock you up. You mean that, don't you? I mean it. All right. I'll go. Now, no, wait a minute. Um, Doc. Uh, yes? Did you ever hear a Drew Holt in the Army? That's the name he used, isn't it, General? Yeah. I never heard of him. All right, General. Till noon. Noon. Goodbye, Doc. Hey, thank you. Goodbye, Parsley. Well, what was the thanks for, Doc? For keeping my mouth shut. Oh? Parsley Smith wasn't a general, Matt. He was the regimental butcher. The regimental butcher? He started out as a line sergeant, but they found out he'd lied about his past experience. He claimed he'd been an officer with General Scott in Mexico. It turned out he'd never been in any army before. Well, he's through now. I feel kind of sorry for him, Matt. He, he isn't a bad man. No, he isn't. And I sure hope I'm doing right. To the millions who smoke L&M. To the millions more who should try L&M. Here is your assurance. L&M gives superior filtration because of its superior filter. Superior taste 
because of L&M's superior tobaccos. Yes, L&M tobaccos are tasty, full of flavor, yet light and mild. So buy a pack of L&M's and take a good close look at L&M's superior filter, the purest tip that ever touched your lips. It's white, all white, truly the miracle tip, because when it's added to L&M's superior tobacco, it actually tones up the taste, actually improves your enjoyment of this great cigarette. L&M's got everything. Superior taste, superior tobacco, superior filter. That's why it's America's best filter tip cigarette. Try L&M today. I didn't see Parsley Smith again that day, and I was glad I didn't. I'd have had to get rough with him, and I had no stomach for that. I did go talk to Drew Holt, however. I decided his gunman was the next man I was going to run out of Dodge. But he wasn't in his office, so I let it go till next day. And the next day started pretty early. Chester came and woke me up about dawn. Seems there was a gun battle in progress down at the edge of town at Drew Holt's house. There he is, Mr. Dunn. Laying behind that barrel there. Yeah. Go tell those sightseers to keep back, Chester. Yes, sir. I swear he's done plumb crazy. General. General Smith, it's Marshal Dillon. Now hold your fire. No, yes. Stay where you are, Marshal. He'll see you. And I, I, I'll come over there. Yeah. Drew, Drew Holt's still alive, Marshal. But I, I, I shot that gun when he is. He's laying dead on the porch over there. I see him. They, they was going to run off tonight. But I was standing guard. I stopped him. Give me your rifle, General. What, what for? I said to give it to me. Oh, you going to take over? Yeah, I'm going to take over. Okay. Here. Now, you're shaking. You been hit? Oh, no. That hole couldn't hit nothing. He kind of yelled once, though. I just might have a bullet in him. You better hope you haven't, you're not enough trouble now. You still don't believe me, do you? Doesn't matter what I believe right now. You stay here, General. Holt, it's Marshal Dillon. I got the general's rifle. You can come out. You got it, Mr. Dillon. I heard him yell. Yeah. Go get General Smith, Chester. Bring him up to the house. Yes, sir. Hey, General. Come here. should have killed him a long time ago. I heard you ran him out of town. I thought we were safe. <laughs> I sure was wrong, wasn't I? dead. Now, you were right, General. You did have a bullet of him. Hey, look at all them bags by the door there, Marshal. But that's the money they was running off with. I don't suppose there's any use asking you how you really came to know about Drew Holt, is there? I'm awful tired. Can I sit 
down in his chair. Yeah, go ahead. It's been a long night. I made that up about him being a spy. I thought you'd more likely believe that than what really happened. It was over in Abilene a few weeks back, Marshal. You know the Grant Hotel there? Yeah, yeah, I know it. Well, I had a room next to this Holt fellow. That's how I come to over here, them plotting this business. You mean you heard him through the wall? Oh, of course not. How could I? No, what happened was, I used to sit there in the dark with my window open. And they'd sit outside on a little balcony they had where they thought nobody could hear them. They didn't know I was anywhere around. Well, see, now, that was smart. I fooled them good. Sure, sure did. Oh, Here, General. Seems like he's made, Mr. Dillon. Look. Well, he's been shot. Yeah, shot dead. Poor old fellow even lied about being hit. Oh, my goodness. But he sure wasn't lying about Drew Holt, was he? He knew about him. But we'll never know how. Well, he told us how he heard him and all. Yeah, but there was something wrong with that, Chester. What? The Grant Hotel burned down two years ago. And now our star... William Conrad. Thank you, George. You know what I like about L&M's is they're mild and mighty easy on the draw. When you get right down to it, no filter stacks up with L&M's pure white miracle tip for quality or effectiveness. Darn good smoke. See for yourself. l and M stands out from all the rest. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were John Daner, Joe Duvall, and Vic Perrin. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Put a smile in your smoking. Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, only Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. This amazing quality detective electronically checks and controls the making of your Chesterfield, giving a uniformity and smoking quality never possible before. For the first time, you get a perfect smoke column from end to end. From the first puff, to the last puff, Chesterfield smokes smoother. Chesterfield smokes cooler. Chesterfield is best for you. Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. Put a smile in your smoking, just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield, they satisfy. Listen to Gunsmoke again next week, transcribed for L&M Filters.